welcome back. So here's where we left with our bookshelf. I wanted to do sort of a molding part two tutorial here to kind of show us a couple more techniques for building molding. This was a sort of one way to do it, you know, if you have a, a case that you're adding molding onto. So I wanted to show a couple other options. For example, let's say we want to do some base molding on this bookshelf. And this is becoming less and less of a practical project here. <laughs> you see as I build this, it's, it's going to start probably looking kind of weird, but just to get the techniques right, we're not actually building a real thing here yet. So we'll do our guide, and we'll make this three quarters. And you know, traditional base molding will have sort of, it'll kind of start with a block, let's say two and a half inches high, and then have some kind of a profile at the top. So I'll do that with here with curves, with my arc, and I'll do that freehand. So we'll come here, and have a little round over. And you see how this is tinted blue to start with? By default, it thinks you want this to be tangent to the original point, which means this would be a smooth curve, so it would come up and smoothly come out. So if you just click once and then click again, you keep that tangent. See, it's a nice smooth curve through there. Another way you can do it, right, is to just sort of drag out wherever you like. You see there, like right there, that wouldn't be a smooth curve. You have a little bit of a jump in it, but you see they still have that little hint in there. So there's that blue hint. And actually, if you look closely, see that? I didn't start right at the end point. That's actually bad, so we're going to undo that. You want to make sure you start right there on the end and not, because this is, remember how we talked about there's really no curves in computers. It's all just straight lines. So this is just a series of straight lines that make up this curve. So you could start any of these points, but you usually don't want to do that, right? You want to start on the very end there. So let's see if I can get my tangent back. Mm, it's out there somewhere. So you can kind of, like those other hints, you can start here, come up, tilt tangent right there. So I've got a nice smooth curve. Remember, we have to finish the shape, so we have to also draw a line from here to here. And that fills in there. So if I just want to put this on one side for now, you know, I've got my push-pull, but see, these are two separate faces. So I can pull just this or just this. So what I need to do is erase the, that line there between them. And now it'll push as one series and come up to this edge here. Looks great, we've got some nice curved molding, but you see you've got these extra lines here. You know, when we drew our arcs, we started, stopped, started, stopped, started, stopped. So every place we stopped, it actually that's actually kind of a separate line segment there. You can get a little extra line. So if you go in there and erase those, yeah, see that doesn't look right. What it actually did is it erased one of those straight segments that made it up, and now you can see through it. So we don't want to do that. So we're going to undo. The eraser has a, another little hidden mode. If you hold shift when you click your eraser, it'll erase a line without actually erasing it. It just sort of hides it from view. So for these curves, that's what we want to do. Because we've seen that when we erase, it's that. So we're just going to go shift erase, get rid of the line itself. And nice little base molding there. If we wanted that to go all the way around, we have to do the follow me. Remember, we have to give it a path to follow. So we'll use our pencil to follow the base here. And we'll make sure we end right there. And we don't want to go past that, so we hit escape and cancel it. And follow me, click here, and then click the line you want it to follow. Come around. Stop right there. Oh, and we've got our molding on three sides there. That's pretty good. Like I said, this isn't very practical. I got this huge lip here before you get into your first shelf. But okay, so let's delete this guide. So let's do another kind of molding. Instead of adding on, which is what this was, right? We had a case and we added on a piece of molding, added on a piece of molding. What if we had, let's say, a big slab top? and we wanted to carve out of that top and carve a profile. Same techniques, but just a little bit, feels a little different the first time you've done it. Let's say you wanted this to overhang by, let's say, an inch on each side. Come over here 
inch and come up for this face an inch. And we want to make sure we don't click on the molding we added and we actually click here on the, the edge. An inch. Then we'll bring up our rectangle and we'll draw our slab. We'll you know reference here and use our little hint to come over. Make sure we're even with the back there. And remember, that's like a flat sheet of paper, so it's sort of kind of see-through as far as SketchUp is concerned, so you give it a little bit of depth here. And then we come up an inch. Okay, so we've got our big slab top there. And let's say we want to just put a nice little chamfer, 45 degree all the way around. So in this case, we're not going to add on to this block. We're going to subtract from it. So let's make this a group. And we'll start from the back. So we're going to need to cut away around. Now remember, if we were to draw, let's say we try to draw our triangle on here, this isn't actually part of the group. Because since we grouped it, we can't affect the original. So we need to go inside, so we double click on our group, right? So these are selectable. And we'll just add a couple guides here. And we're going to say, we'll have to have like a we'll do an eighth of an inch shoulder there. And we'll have an eighth of an inch shoulder from here. So then we'll come in seven eighths, and then we'll just draw from this corner to that corner. We can verify that. We'll just take our push pull here, and we'll see. See that now it cuts away. And you notice if you go all the way to the edge and click, that's a zero thickness, so it just takes it out basically. So it's a really quick way to chamfer two sides, but that's not going to chamfer all three sides from us because now we can't go from here back, because now if we try to draw our, you know, our triangle, we're at an angle, and then our angles are all screwed up. So it's not going to be a perfect 45. So we're going to do this standard and follow me. And unfortunately, you'll notice as we do this, it seems like the follow me tool is a little buggy at times. So we'll see if we run into that, and we'll explain sort of some fixes for it. So follow me. We're going to click our face. Then we click our edge we want it to follow. You notice it doesn't actually cut out like the uh, push-pull tool does. We saw the chamfer happen right away. This one we sort of have to trust that it's working. You can see the box that it forms here as we cut out. We'll rotate around. You see that flash there? That's the, one of the bugs I'm talking about. So now it's like that. It actually push-pulled around the entire model for us already. Now I'm not really sure why it does that. Like if I clicked right now, See, then it chamfered the whole thing, but then this edge got kind of screwed up. So it seemed like the follow me is sort of buggy. And one of the ways I've found around that is, let's go back to our start here. So we'll come out and we'll hide the rest of this model. Let's use the uh, outliner to do that. And we'll come over here and we'll hide everything. I think this is the top here, so we'll hide everything except for that. We'll hide this and we'll hide one of our shelves down there. So the way I found to do it is to be able to see all three sides that you need to follow me all at once. So maybe we want to go around here like this, and we can see all three sides. So now we'll go Tools, Follow Me, and if you ever remember, if you get this little hash mark, it's because you're on a group and you actually need to go in, so we'll double click. Add that to Follow Me. So we'll click here, and we'll come around all three sides. Boop. There we go. So that chamfered away from our top. And then we'll go back to our outliner, bring everything back. There's our big top there. We can erase these guides. Oops, a couple guides got. Look at that, how they can get grouped into an object. So that, so we'll have to go in and then go and delete this guide. That's by himself. This one's inside. This one's by himself, and we got this guy over here. So there we go.